What did you do? Why'd you kill the cat? Smile for me. Smile with your teeth. Go like this. Did you eat that cat? Did you eat it? No, why'd you kill it? Did you guys see all this? No, we pulled up and she was just laying there with it. Did you see her eating it? Eating it. She was eating it? Yeah, yeah. she was. You call the Humane Society to see if they'll come pick this cat up. It's deceased. Well, if you watched the debate last night, you were told this wasn't happening. Just another example of believe the media, not your lying eyes. I don't know about y'all, but this one video is proof enough to me that this is likely not an isolated incident. These people are bringing a culture with them that we just simply don't understand, and it doesn't appear that that culture is going to blend well with the general population here in the United States. China has just had to urgently evacuate over 400,000 people after they were hit by one of the most powerful super typhoons in over a decade. And for perspective, a super typhoon is equivalent to that of a Category 5 hurricane. All schools in the area that it made landfall were shut, trains, boats, and flights were suspended, and all tourist attractions have been closed down. The winds near its center reached a staggering 145 miles per hour. And this typhoon has doubled in strength after it killed more than 16 people in the Philippines last week. It's now predicted to move along and hit Vietnam this weekend. That looks absolutely terrifying. <laughs> I can't even imagine being in a storm like that. There's nowhere to hide or seek cover. Your only hope is to cover your head and start praying. I don't think that this was intentionally created through weather manipulation or anything like that, but I could absolutely see this being a side effect of all the tampering they've been doing over recent years. Maybe they need to quit playing God with the weather before they accidentally kill everybody. Hey, if you're enjoying this video and you like this type of content, I post a new one just like it every day, Monday through Friday. It'd be awesome if you'd hit that subscribe button and come back tomorrow to join me. Okay, so let me ask you now, I'm being very professional about this, right? Let me ask you, what is the evidence that it might not have been the suicide that's um, claimed by the used to call? Overwhelmingly, the, the uh, primary component of the case that I forwarded is that uh, Cobain did not die of a shotgun injury. Uh, a shotgun blast to the head is the, the, forms the most distinctive wound pattern in all of uh, uh, ballistics and uh, forensic pathology. Uh, it's an utterly devastating injury, and yet here, what we have is a still from video showing uh, the garage, the police detective, and the top of Kurt Cobain's head on the tile floor. What you see is not a single drop of blood or any other uh, physiological matter anywhere around the head. And uh, it's particularly disturbing to think that uh, someone could have shot themselves in the mouth with a big bore shotgun and not uh, suffered the typical devastating injury that occurs uh, in every known case to have occurred prior to Kurt Cobain. In other words, the fact that this video shows no blood at the scene of the crime all around his head fairly well establishes that he probably died of circumstances uh, which have never been described. And if that's not convincing enough, uh, the thing you have to understand is the day after this video aired, showing no blood at the scene of the crime, the King County Medical Examiner then changed his, his description of the wound scenario to no exit wound, all of the shots stayed inside his skull, therefore little or no blood was present at the scene of the crime. So where was this video aired? Uh, this uh, video was first aired on June 1st of 1994, uh, about two months after Cobain died. And uh, on June 2nd, uh, in a phone conversation with myself, uh, the chief pathologist of the King County Medical Examiner's Office changed the description from the usual, he blew it with a shotgun, to in this particular case, there was no exit wound, all of the shots stayed inside the skull, Therefore, little or no blood was present at the scene of the crime, all of which is completely impossible, by the way. Where was the video aired? On your show? That's correct. Correct. Okay, great. Just a very quick, don't move, very quick close-up. 
of the, of the hair. Okay. This is a case that I've studied extensively, and this is far from the most compelling evidence. There was a chair lodged against the outside of the only exit door when they found him. There was a box of cartridges on the table next to him with only one missing. The cartridge was later found in a desk drawer and matched to the box they found initially, and the cartridge in the shotgun had no fingerprints on it, as well as, if I'm remembering correctly, the gun itself had no fingerprints on it either. There's a really good book you can read that does a great job of breaking this all down. It's called Heavier Than Heaven, and it goes through Kurt's entire life with interviews from family and friends, and then poses a alternate theory at the end as to how he was likely extinguished. I highly suggest you read it if you're a fan. It's one of the most interesting biographies I've ever read. I'm going to show you guys a video of something that's honestly really difficult to watch. In this tent lives 77-year-old Judy Howe with her 80-year-old partner, George, a situation she never imagined to be in. She says they had an apartment in Halifax before the building was sold and to be torn down. After that, they went to Ontario to be with George's dying mother, but they couldn't afford to stay there and chose to return to Halifax. It's not home. You know, it's not a place you can cook a meal for yourself. You can take a shower. We go up to the Y on so Park Street here. I always get lost. <laughs> Trying to find my way home. And uh, we that, that's where we shower at. And you can go there every day if you want, you know. And thank God they had that service. Uh, but it's not where I want to be. I go to sorry. I go to big crying at night. At night I go to big crying to and I pray to God asking him to get me out of here. That's someone that was born, raised in Canada, worked her whole life, is in her final stages of life, is retired, and is sleeping in a tent on the street, and she's homeless. We failed her, and we abandoned her, but when we get illegal immigrants, asylum seekers, or even immigrants in general, we give them free food, we give them shelter, and we give them money. This is getting ridiculous. There's no reason on earth that woman should be on the street. It's an embarrassment, and this is exactly the thing that drives me nuts about the Liberal government. They don't care about their own. Otherwise, stories like this just simply wouldn't exist among Canadians. She has to take her showers at the Y. Shout out to the Y for doing that, that's amazing, but th this is just, it, it, it's, I have no words. With all the money the federal government takes in, regardless of what first world country you're speaking of, stuff like this just simply shouldn't be possible. With the liberal programs for gender studies and all the other nonsensical crap that they spend money on, there's no reason any citizen of any country should be without basic shelter in a time of need. They have the funds and the means necessary to fix this. They just have no intent to do so. We literally pay them to protect us, and this is what we get in return. It's pathetic. NASA has discovered an enormous hidden ocean underneath the surface of Mars so big that it could contain life if Mars ever had life to begin with. So the story behind this is that scientists are examining data from NASA's InSight lander and they've revealed the likely presence of an underground reservoir containing enough liquid to cover the entire planet with a mile of water. That is an absolutely outrageously massive reservoir probably much bigger than reservoirs that we have here on Earth. Of course, we have the standard uh, picture of Mars, and these are geophysicists saying that there's a gigantic hidden ocean beneath Mars' surface, big enough to where it could harbor life. So the massive underground reservoir, reservoir was discovered using seismic data from the InSight lander, and they said that it's trapped inside a layer of fractured rock about 7 to 13 miles, which is up to 20 kilometers, beneath the red planet's crust. That's so deep that it's sort of beyond our current drilling capabilities, but I think it would be really awesome if we discover aliens and they're underwater aliens. That would be really fun. It might even be Greys underwater. Maybe that's where they're hiding. Maybe that's why they look so different, why they don't necessarily have to blink. I'm being silly. It's unlikely to be that. We'd more likely find microscopic or very simple life underneath the water, but it's important to note that even on Earth, we cannot drill 13 miles into the rock. So doing so on Mars is just beyond human beings' technological capacity at the moment, and it will be a very long time before we see if any of this comes to fruition. I don't buy it. <laughs> they can't even tell us what's at the bottom of our own oceans, but they can use some scientific data from a lander to determine not only that there's water under the surface of Mars, but they know exactly how much and exactly how far down it is. <laughs> 
I call bullshit. Gen Z doesn't know how to write a check. They don't know how to address an envelope. They don't know how to read cursive. They don't know how to read a paper map. They can't get anywhere unless there's a GPS map on their phone. All I'm saying is if Gen Z takes over the world, it's going to be pretty easy to get it back. <laughs> We're just going to write our battle plans in cursive on a piece of paper. My wife and I were in a dealership yesterday looking at a new family van, and our salesperson commented on how nice my wife's handwriting was, and then offered up, I can't read it though, I can't read or write in cursive. <laughs> they never taught her in school, and this woman was at least in her mid-twenties. I think they stopped teaching us intentionally because all of our founding documents are in cursive, and they don't want us to be able to read them for ourselves. That's just my theory, but I haven't heard one proposed to me yet that makes more sense than that. Huge abduction phenomenon, it's still going on. And there's a tremendous amount of genetic manipulation. Wait, wait a second. Is there actual ET abductions going on right now on planet Earth? The ETs get permission to do all that. And the U.S. government gets tech help. The other half of the military realizes the abuse that's going on and realizes that's not okay and is, you know, fundamentally opposed to it. Well, apparently they're gonna turn your home safe. Do you believe some people in the government have contracts with ETs so we can exchange humans with technology? There's basically two groups of ETs. There are many species, many subgroups, everything. But you can think of it in the most basic terms in terms of good ETs and bad ETs. <laughs> Well, the ones that offer tech transfer so they can get written permission to operate here on Earth, we call them the bad ETs. And they run this planet as a prison. It's a psychological prison, but it's still a prison. People can't escape. It's that, and you're talking about billions of people in this prison. The good ETs are fighting for what we call catastrophic disclosure or you know sudden disclosure where all the truth comes out they just want everything to come out the good ets have what i would call a fanatical adherence to the concept of free will the issue is those ufos that we're taking videos of are of the bad ets those are not the ones that are being shot down the ones that are being shot down are the, are the crypt ships of the good ETs. Now you can sort of say, well, why don't the good ETs, if they're militarily dominant in the solar system, why don't they, why don't they just invade? A couple reasons. First of all, there are signed written agreements between the U.S. government and uh, some other governments allowing the bad ETs to be here. Now the good ETs are saying, if you have disclosure, then that can change. So all they're doing is trying to say, we need full disclosure. And then if you guys still want to be aligned with the bad ETs, it's your choice. And then the good ETs will literally just go away. But the bad ETs know that if there's full disclosure, there's going to be a revolution. That if, they act, if the people actually find out what's really going on, there will be an uproar. This is, um, how can I say it, bizarre? I mean, I heard stories about people being abducted before. This is just like another level. So what do you think? Do you think humans are being abducted in exchange for technology? Let's assume for a moment that this is all real and we had actual evidence to back up the claim. And there was absolutely no chance that this was misinformation or theory. Would it not basically answer every question we have about aliens? It would explain why they're here, how they're operating, what we get out of it, and why so many people of all walks of life have come forward with an alien abduction story. I'm not sure if this is what's going on, but it's been the predominant theory since I was a kid and it still seems to be today. I think that says quite a lot. This is really crazy. Macron has decided to dissolve Parliament, the lower chamber of Parliament. Well, Toxic, what does that mean? Well, I will explain. Macron sent shockwaves through France with snap decision to dissolve government. Why would he dissolve the government, huh? Let's read. French President Emmanuel Macron sparked pandemonium across the French government by effectively dismantling it overnight. During the European Parliament election on Sunday, 
Projected results began to confirm what had been expected for months. The far-right National Rally, or RN, would crush Macron's renewed. The RN, led by Martine Lee Pen, 28-year-old protege of Jordan Bardella, won the elections with around 32% of the vote. Macron's coalition, led by candidate Valerie Heyer, came in second with roughly 15%, trailing by a wide margin. In the midst of an already hectic night, as votes were being tallied, Macron announced that he would dissolve France's National Assembly, the country's lower chamber of parliament. Snap elections would determine in its new composition. I could not, at the end of the day, act as if nothing was happening, Macron said in a televised address. Therefore, I will dissolve the National Assembly tonight. The decision is a massive political gamble. First of all, there have been no recent polls surveying people's voting intentions in this type of election. Then Macron risks losing even more seats in the parliament. If this happens and the RN takes the lead, Macron would be forced to hand over the domestic governing power to them. So he's trying to control parliament because they're losing the elections. But he doesn't know that's going to f*** more. But the bigger story at hand here is he's dismantling the government only through the sole reason or intentions behind losing the election. Why is that allowed? Isn't that like treasonous? Like, what the f***? The question I ask you right now, straight up, is what do you think is going to happen when Biden has to hand over his power to Trump? You're hearing words of reprogramming Americans as if we are a communist country under dictatorship. What do you mean reprogramming? And then when they say that out their own lips, it makes you think about the programming they've already done with all these Western ideologies with gender and pronouns and P3DOs. Are you guys paying attention? Can you see? This is straight foreshadowing. Peace to God. It does seem like what happens across the pond always trickles over here into the U.S. Fortunately, our government isn't set up like Francis, so we don't have to worry about that specific thing happening here. And another fortunate outcome of this is I think it's going to blow up in his face big time. I've been watching the sentiment of the French people for a while now, and Macron doesn't have very many fans. I really feel like this is going to backfire, and he's going to lose even more control, and this is absolutely a good thing. Could you imagine living in a world where 1,000 years have been manipulated and added to the timeline without your knowledge? So why add 1,000 years? How does that help or change anything? It changes everything. It allows 1,000 years of nonsense into the narrative. It allows cowboys and Indians. It allows doubt to creep in. It allows them to explain the St. Peter's Basilica. It allows the evolution theory to be possible to the individual that hasn't done any research of their own. It allows fake characters and fake stories. It allows Columbus to discover America, which we all know is not true. So why would any of it be true? An old world civilization was wiped out and their buildings remain. But the, you say you thought that the Renaissance was a reset. Absolutely was. Okay, and so are you saying it was a reset which took us away from the ancient Tartaria and put us into a new place? Yes, absolutely. They had been they had been a it was either Christian, like the true bloodline, the true Christ consciousness Christians, had been living in peace for about a thousand years. And then the feud started, it's called the feudal system came into being to slowly dig at them and start getting rid of them. And the crusades started in the like 10 something. And, and the Roman Catholic Church was sending out their so-called missionaries, which were really on a mission to take over the world and destroy all the indigenous people, all the beautiful people, all the creative people, anything that threatened their domain so that they would be able to remain on top. And then when Putin came along, and we don't know which Putin it is, you know, you can go into that another day, but he definitely had a long-term agenda because his strategy, what you can see that he had the strategy to take out the ruling satanic elite right from whenever he was put in. Because in 2001, he established BRICS. Obviously, you know, 
India, China, the, the largest countries in the world. He got them together. In 2009, they had a full-scale diplomatic meeting in Russia. And then in 2013, he releases these maps of Grand Tartaria. And then in 2016, he kicks out all the Rothschilds and the whole central banking system and the new world order system and everything else and tells them they can never come back to Russia under any circumstances. Then, come 2021, he starts routing out the Khazarian Mafia in the Ukraine and reclaiming what was probably once Grand Tartaria. So you can see from that picture that the map release was a very strategic move in this ongoing game of, of world chess. I apologize about that video freezing halfway through. The original video is like that, so there wasn't anything I could do to fix it. It sure would have been nice if we could have seen that map, though, because I looked online, and you know everything you try to look up about Putin right now is just buried. So I don't know what map it is that they're supposedly showing that has Tartaria on it, but I want a copy of it. Tartaria existed. I'm 100% convinced of that. The best way to gain control of the most intelligent, powerful species on the planet would be to completely divide them from the love within themselves. As soon as they are old enough to begin creating an understanding of who they are, force them into a system that teaches them that it is wrong to be yourself if yourself is different from what is accepted as normal. Confuse them about their own biological makeup so that they think that permanently altering their body is the answer to happiness. Require their daily attendance at an institution that makes them focus only on the information that is provided. Make them attend that institution from age 5 until an adult and repeatedly test them on the information so that it becomes their truth. Give them an explanation to everything so that they never have a chance to make their own assumptions of the world. Scold them and humiliate them if they suggest an opinion that opposes that of their authoritatives. Keep reminding them of how cruel their ancestors were to each other in the past and broadcast how cruel they are to each other in the present. Only show them tragedies on the news so that they live in fear and think the worst of one another. Convince them that their species used to be that of an incognizant wild animal. Make them think that their very existence is so incredibly random that they lack purpose and struggle to make sense of a creator. Tell them that their kind is as smart as they've ever been so that they don't question the integrity of the system that they're in. Provide them idols with artificial beauty and use them as examples of what it is to look perfect so that they are never content with their own appearance and can't help but to compare themselves amongst each other. Sounded like she was reading out of the federal government's playbook, didn't it? <laughs> My name's Carl Beach, and I've got Parkinson's. And Parkinson's took my, my, my speech from me, and I discovered the hack. And my friend and I built a device that mimics the tapping hack. And when I put this device on, my voice comes back. And not only does my voice come back, it reduces some of my other symptoms. And people with other autonomic conditions are found the same. And it has a profound impact on anxiety too. This thing's amazing. When I turn it off, my symptoms immediately hit me. When I turn it on, I come back. Let's get them out there as cheaply as possible and as freely as possible where we can. And that's our good clip for the day. I came across this and did some digging on the guy, and he's trying to bring this thing to market as cheaply as possible, designing the thing himself, testing it on friends and family, and posting constant updates on his Facebook page. If you or somebody that you love is dealing with this issue, you may soon have a way to fix it, and I just wanted to help spread this guy's video because he seems so genuine and well-meaning in what he's doing. But guys and gals, I'm going to go ahead and end the video right there. I hope you enjoyed these clips we watched together today. I'll be back tomorrow with another video. I hope you come back to join me. Don't forget to leave a like and subscribe if you haven't already and check out www.barry-step.com if you'd like to order yourself a shirt or a hat and help me support the channel also don't forget to post your photos of your merch over in the discord to get your photo in a video but with all that out of the way i hope everyone has a great safe fantastic rest of your day and i will see you all tomorrow